Hi, this is from Docs Upgrade. As we mentioned in our last video, we are going to start this lecture with upper limb. Initially in upper limb, we are going to start with essays and then go on with the short notes. There are totally four essays which are the most important and most frequently asked ones. In this lecture, we will be discussing in detail about mammary gland and brachial plexus. In mammary gland, we will be discussing in detail about its gross anatomy, external features, relation, blood supply, lymphatic drainage, development and applied anatomy. Whichever essay is being asked, it is very important that we mention its applied anatomy at the end of the essay. In mammary gland, lymphatic drainage is another important short note to be noted. So let us start on with the gross anatomy. To give a very small introduction, it is a modified sweat gland, rudimentary in male, well developed in the female after puberty. It is present in the superficial fascia except the tail part which pierces deep fascia of the axilla through foramen of Langer so it is called as the tail of Spence. It vertically extends from the second to the sixth rib and horizontally it extends from the rectal border of sternum to the mid axillary line. So now let us move on to its external features. Towards your right you could see a diagram which shows the mammary gland. There is a blackish projection, conical projection which you could see which is basically the nipple and the area surrounding the nipple is the areola. Let us now discuss in detail about the nipple and the areola. So nipple is basically a blackish conical projection of the skin situated in the fourth intercostal space. It is pierced by 10 to 15 lactiferous duct and contains the smooth muscles. When you move on to areola, it is basically a circular black discoloration around the nipple and it contains plenty of modified sebaceous glands which enlarges only during pregnancy and are called the tubercles of Montgomery. They secrete oil secretion which basically lubricates and prevents cracking of the skin over the nipple. It is devoid of hair and fat. The external features basically consist of two structures which is the skin and the parenchyma. The parenchyma consists of three parts which is the glandular part, fibrous stroma and the fatty stroma. Initially let us start with the glandular part. It consists of the alveoli, lactiferous duct and the dilated part called the lactiferous sinuses. And to make you understand in a much better way, there is a diagram of the mammary gland and it exactly locates the lactiferous duct and the lactiferous sinuses. Now let us move on to the fibrous stroma. It consists of the fibrous septa which extends from the skin to the deep fascia and divides the gland into 10 to 15 lobes by the ligament of Cooper. Ligament of Cooper is also located in the diagram which represents the mammary gland. And now last one is the fatty stroma. It lies between the septum and the glandular part. Now let us move on to the relations of the mammary gland. Superficial relations include the skin and the superficial fascia. Deep relations are the retro mammary space which is traversed by lymph and the blood vessels. The breast prothoses are basically inserted in this place. And next one is the pectoral fascia. There are totally three muscles where the base of the gland rests on. That is the pectoralis major in the medial two-third, serratus anterior in the lateral one-third, external oblique in the inframedial quadrant. So now if you see the diagram which is given on towards your right, you could see the pectoralis major which basically covers the medial two-third and the serratus anterior which covers the lateral one-third and the external oblique which is present in the inferomedial part. There are other structures which are actually deep to the above muscles which are the subclavius, clavipectoral fascia, pectoralis minor and the suspensory ligament of the axilla. Now we will be comparing the structure and the relation. Towards the left side of the diagram, you will be able to see the mammary gland. In that, the ligament of Cooper which is basically the part of the fibrous stroma that divides the gland into 10 to 15 lobes and the nipple which is a blackish conical projection of the skin, the areolar which is a circular blackish discoloration around the nipple, lactiferous sinuses which is the dilated part and the lactiferous duct which is a part of the glandular part. And towards the right, you will be able to see the deep relations of the mammary gland and its tail. You will be able to see on the superior the nerve that goes to the serratus anterior, pectoralis major in the median two-third, serratus anterior in the lateral one-third and the external oblique in the inferomedial quadrant. So now let us move on to the blood supply of the mammary gland. 
So I'll be telling you a mnemonic which is very important for you to remember all the arteries that take part in the arterial supply of the mammary gland. So remember the mnemonic I am a pick where I stands for internal thoracic artery, A for axillary artery and P for posterior intercostal artery. Now let us discuss in detail about the arterial supply. Initially, it's the lateral thoracic artery which is the second branch of the axillary artery and is the main artery supplying the mammary gland. It curls around the lateral border of the pectoralis major and supplies the lateral part of the mammary gland. The next one is the internal thoracic artery which is the branch of the first part of the subclavian artery that sends branches through the intercostal spaces. It supplies the median half of the mammary gland. The branches in the second and the third intercostal spaces are the largest one. The third one is the lateral branch of the posterior intercostal arteries which is a branch of the descending thoracic iota. It gives perforating branches which also supplies the mammary gland. The last one is the acromiothoracic, a branch of the axillary artery which supplies the upper lateral quadrant of the gland. Let us discuss about the venous drainage. I'll be telling you another mnemonic which is mapped that makes you easily remember all the vein which is very important for the venous drainage. The M stands for internal thoracic vein, A for axillary vein and P for posterior intercostal vein. So the main veins draining the area around the areolar and the granular tissue are the deep veins. These veins run with the corresponding arteries. Internal thoracic vein drains into subclavian vein, acromiothoracic vein, superior thoracic vein and the lateral thoracic vein. All these three veins drain into the axillary vein. Posterior intercostal veins are important link to the internal venous plexus and to the vertebral vein. This is a pathway for metastatic spread to bone. So now let us move on to the most important topic which is the lymphatic drainage. It is also an important short note which is often being asked. Now I will be telling you why lymphatic drainage is important. The malignancy of mammary gland is common in females particularly in the post menopausal stage. It almost spreads to the regional lymph nodes and to the opposite. Early diagnosis has a better prognosis. The 75% of lymphatic drains into axillary nodes, 20% into the internal mammary nodes and 5% into the posterior intercostal node. Superficial and deep of the lateral half of the mammary gland, it drains into the anterior group, central and the apical group of the axillary lymph nodes. Medial half is divided into upper medial and the lower medial quadrants. A simple nomenclature is being adapted which is the lower nodes which is the level 1, it is below the pectoralis minor muscle, medium node which is the level 2, behind the pectoralis minor muscle and the high node which is the level 3, above the pectoralis minor muscle. As I mentioned in the previous slide that the medial half is divided into upper medial and the lower medial quadrants. Let us discuss in detail about the upper medial and the lower medial quadrant and its lymphatic drainage. So here is a table column which basically explains you very clearly about the lymphatic drainage of the upper medial and the lower medial bisecting it into the superficial one and the deep one. So in the superficial one it either drains into any of the following nymph node. The parastal group of lymph nodes on the same side which are situated along the internal mammary artery, opposite parasitical group of lymph node, supraclavicular lymph node present above the clavicle. If you move on to the lower medial, it also drains into any one of the following lymph node which is mentioned below. That is either the parasitical group of lymph nodes on the same side, opposite parasitical group of lymph node or drains into the lymph node in the rectus sheet which then goes to the liver and then to the ovary. Then move on to the deep which includes the parenchyma and the skin over the nipple and the areola. It drains into one of the following node which is either the apical node or the internal mammary lymph node. Let us now trail back to the previous slide to make the concept more understandable on lymphatic drainage of the mammary gland. So in this diagram you will be able to see the supraclavicular lymph node which is present above the clavicle on the superior region and on the lateral you will be able to see the apical lymph node and the axillary nodes and on the medial side you will be able to see the parasternal group of lymph node which is present on the same side and is situated along the internal mammary artery and if we go on to the inferior that is basically the lower medial you'll be able to see the pathway that is from the lactic sheet to the liver and then to the ovary. The last before section is the development of the mammary gland. Let us discuss in short about the chronological age. 
chronological age basically describes the age in which it was developed mammary gland was developed in the fourth week of winter uterine life the germ layers are the ectoderm and the mesoderm it was developed in the region of milk line which extends from the axilla to the inguinal region of the ventral side of the body the epithelial lining of the duct and the alveoli are developed from the surface ectoderm fibro fatty stroma is developed from the underlying mesoderm and let us discuss of the anomalies polymastia polymastia basically means supernumerary breast where the supernumerary basically refers to more number amastia refers to absence of breast athelia refers to absence of nipple polyetheria refers to more number of nipples let us move on to the last section of the essay which is the applied anatomy in breast abscess the incision is taken radially to avoid damage to the lactiferous duct there are few applied anatomy of lymphatics which include axillary lymphadenopathy which is frequently due to the infection and malignant disease of mammary gland in malignant disease the lymph node is hard irregular and fixed to the deeper structures the most important one is the pyodi orange which is a condition where the hair follicles over the lymph appear to be retracted and is caused by the obstruction of the cutaneous lymphatics with the stagnation of the lymph and oedema of the skin around the hair follicles this resembles the skin of an orange and hence the name has been derived and towards your right you can actually see how the condition of pyodi orange looks now we'll be moving on to the next important essay which is the radial nerve in radial nerve we'll be discussing in detail about its root value course and relation distribution branches and the applied anatomy as i already mentioned applied anatomy is a very important section in a, in every single essay and more importantly distribution of the radial nerve is also an important short note that is being asked more often The root value for radial nerve is C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 and the course and relation is it arises from the posterior cord of brachial plexus the posterior cord lies posterior to the second part of axillary artery and radial nerve lies posterior to the third part of the axillary artery so which is it basically lies medial to the axillary nerve In the lower part of the axilla the nerve passes downward and has following relation anteriorly axillary artery and pectoralis major posteriorly subscapularis teres major and latissimus dorsi medially axillary vein and laterally coracobrachialis muscle then the radial nerve passes through the lower triangular space and enters the radial groove along with the profunda brachii artery In the radial groove it runs downwards between the lateral and the medial head of the tricep at lower end of the radial groove it pierces the lateral intramuscular septum and enters into the anterior compartment of the arm In the picture you can see very clearly that on the posterior there is subscapularis and the teres major and you could see that the radial nerve enters the radial groove along with the profunda brachii artery and at the lower end of the radial groove it pierces the lateral muscular septum and enters the anterior compartment of the arm So once it enters the anterior compartment of the arm it passes in a intramuscular interval between the brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus and supply these muscles in the forearm once it reaches the level of lateral epicondyle it gives off the posterior intraosseous branch which leaves the fossa by piercing the supinata muscle and enters the back of the forearm at the elbow joint the radial nerve divides into superficial and the deep terminal branches the superficial terminal branch reaches the dorsum of forearm and divides into 4 to 5 branches This diagram clearly explains the motor branches of the radial nerve in the arm. So if you see the lateral group of the radial nerve includes the brachialis, brachioradialis and the extensor carpi radialis longus and the medial group includes the tricep long head and the tricep medial head and the posterior group include the tricep lateral head and the triceps medial head and the anconius Now I'll be discussing in detail about the distribution of the radial nerve in the arm. The medial group is present above the radial group, long and the medial head of triceps form the muscular part. Posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm forms the cutaneous part and the elbow joint is involved in it. 
Posterior group is present in the groove, medial head of the tricep, lateral head of the tricep and the anconeus form the muscular part, lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm forms the cutaneous part. Lateral group is present below the radial group, brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and brachialis which is the proprioceptive branch forms the muscular part. This table shows distribution of branches of radial nerve in the forearm, which is the superficial branch and the deep branch. Superficial terminal branch divides into digital and communicating. Muscular branches to extensor carpi radialis brevis. The branch is given before piercing the supinator, then the supinator muscle, and then the muscle forming the anatomical snuff box, which is the abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and the extensor pollicis Rongus. Then it includes the extensor indices, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, and extensor carpi ulnaris. So now we will be finally discussing about the applied anatomy. This table clearly explains you in detail about the site, the cause, the motor effect and the sensory effect. It includes axilla, middle of the arm, proximal part of the forearm and the wrist joint. It is very important to remember the wrist joint because it is the only place where there is no motor effect that is no muscles are actually paralyzed in case of the injury that happens in the wrist joint. As we have discussed about the injury to radial nerve and the effect at different regions in a form of a tabular column in a much detailed manner, this first picture shows you the crutch palsy and the second picture is Saturday night palsy where both of them are a cause of injury to radial nerve with the site of axilla. In our next lecture, we will be covering the remaining two essays which is the brachial plexus and shoulder or glenohumeral joint. Please like our video, subscribe it and click on to the bell icon for you to get updated with our further lectures.